You're a vape. Huh? Yeah, I got to. I get it. I don't smoke cigarettes no more, so. Even though I did smoke a cigarette with Chad the other day. Yeah, I felt real bad. I told you, how, but I don't smoke them. I'm over it. Every time I smoke one, it makes me realize why I hate it now. Well, that's good. I felt like an enabler. No, All don't right. worry about it. Cool. I might smoke one in Vegas. That place gives me, I got too much PTSD. I've done some fucked up shit out there. But, no, I'm off the cigarettes. I don't even really smoke this like that. I just, it just. That shit tastes like candy. That's the problem. This is, what is this? Watermelon ice, yeah. I'm black. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, five, four, three, two. It's the Danny Brown Show. Sit back, relax your eye. Ready now, while your mates do the yows. It's the Danny Brown Show. We about to get live. Let's go. It's the Danny Brown Show. Sit back, relax your eye. Ready now, while your mates do the yows. It's the Danny Brown Show. We about to get live. Let's go. Yo, yo, yo. What's up, yo? Coming to y'all live from Wild Me Studios, it's the Danny Brown Show here in beautiful Austin, Texas. I got the Booth Boys with me. How y'all fellas doing? Great, yo, Danny. Yo, what's Always up? Always good to have you in here. Yeah. I got Sarah Wine Shake from This Bitch Podcast in the house. How you doing, lady? I'm good. I'm so excited to be here. I haven't done this show before. I know, yeah. We just, I mean, I just talk about random dumb shit, so. Perfect. It's it's, it's okay. You So you've been... Hanging out in Austin, Texas for a minute now. Been yeah, doing shows. yeah, I've been coming out like once a month for shows and all kinds of stuff, podcasts. Do you like shows. it out here? Yeah, I like it out here, but I'm an LA bitch. LA bitch. Yeah. God damn it. I like I like the ocean. Yeah, there's no oceans in Texas. I no think. oceans. Do you like Austin? Yeah, I mean they say keep Austin weird, and I think I'm a weirdo, so I think I'm like at home here. Yeah. You know. I mean, and plus, I, I just got too used to the weather now. Even though today is pretty foggy, shitty day, but now I just I can't. I mean, me being right now, I know back home in Michigan, it's probably like fucking freezing, black ice everywhere. That's the worst shit. Yeah. Well, also, but the summer here is hot as fuck. Yeah, but I mean, I I used to complain about it a lot. Yeah. But I think I got to the point where I'm used to it. Only thing that, that kind of throws it off is that um. Being that it's so fucking hot, everywhere you fucking go is fucking freezing indoors. So yeah. it kind of like throws you off and you might could get sick of some shit. But I've been handling it pretty good, man. I like, I just like Austin, man. It's just, I don't know. It's a lot of weirdos here, man. So it's been good, man. Yeah, I like your outfit. Thank you. This my boy, Dumb My Duck. Shouts out. L.A. Yeah, L.A. Most, well. He made it. Yeah. He does all his custom work and shit. He got a, um online shop so y'all can check him out. But yeah, I had um just Instagram. That looks sick. It's you know, like, it's did actually, he paint it? I don't know what the fuck he be doing, but you actually could take the pants apart and put the pants on your sleeves and make your jacket really what? big and crazy. And then it also has like, you know, some cowboy shit going. That's cool. So yeah, so I always, I mean, with this um last project I just did, I mean, I, I was going through Instagram. You know, I look at clothes and shit. I just follow yeah. like a lot of fashion shit. And um, I just came across his shit. I'm like, what the fuck is this? This motherfucker making crazy shit. So he actually been styling me. For like my last run for this album, but and I want to keep them going. I actually need to get them to make me some shit for this tour coming up. Y'all can check me out, you know, hit me up, come through. But yeah, I want to make some shit for this tour. But um, uh, the most fucked up shit he has styled my last video, and he sent me a shit ton of clothes, and and then I had them for a minute, and then I had to fucking send them back to him through FedEx, and FedEx lost the fucking clothes. No. Yeah. So I've been fucking going back and forth with them trying to figure it out how to get these fucking clothes and. So yeah, Doug, I'm I'm still on it. Don't worry about it, Doug. <laughs> 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 All right, we're jumping into some of these Ask Danny's. You can always hit me up. Ask Danny. Danny at the Danny Brown Show.com. It's Danny at the Danny Brown Show.com. First up, we got Milf Zilla. Ask Danny. <laughs> Good name. Dear Mr. Danny, my mother-in-law is a bona fide silver fox. Five one C cups and a dumpy. She just turned <laughs> 50 and has been acting strange around me for the past six months. The last time I was over there, she told me to pull my wiener out right in front of my wife and her sister. No. They were all smiling at me like they were waiting. I felt like this is a trap, Danny. Now I believe she knows that I've been wanting to smash her and does things like pick stuff right up in front of me, takes her sweet time picking it up, hugs with her hands lower than they should be. What should I do? Half of me wants to do the right thing, but the other half of me is just to catch her upstairs on a Sunday night and lay it on her forehead. 
Please help. <laughs> Yours truly, Cheese Wiener. Um, Cheese Wiener. I feel like you can probably answer this question better than me coming from a woman's point of view. Does she really want it? Or is she just want to know? You know, some of those older <laughs> ladies be a little feisty. Maybe she's just like a little flirty and horny and he, and cheesy wiener, whatever. First of all, he called his dick a wiener. That's already the number one red flag for me. Is it? Yeah. I don't want to see a wiener. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see a dick. Okay. Um, you know, not a wiener. I mean, just the fact that it's your mother-in-law. I feel like, you know, you got to have some type of discipline and resistance. Somewhere. Some type of boundary. Yeah. I mean, just the fact it's your mother-in-law. I mean, I don't, you know, I feel like, I don't know. Older women do be a little flirty sometimes, you know. I think, you know, as age, as they age, they get hornier. They get into their teenage years. <laughs> you know, that, that, that shit start kicking in and they just get, I don't know. But for me personally, man, no, you got to just, she just probably having fun. And they setting you up for failure. Probably. She probably told you, your wife that you ain't shit. And she's like, watch, I'm going to prove it to you. You know? Yeah. And also, like, who wants to fuck their mother-in-law, really? Yeah, that's just, yeah, it's just got to be boundary set. I mean, that's it's hard for men. Men don't have no discipline. Oh, but, I've seen it. <laughs> a man with discipline is like a god, you know, so. A god? Yeah, man. You could tell yeah. a bitch, if you could say no. Like, that's that's like the main thing for a man, to be able to say no. And be like, no, I'm not going to just whip my dick out on her forehead. I'm not going to just that. whip my dick out on her forehead. On my mother-in-law's forehead. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, we all want to do it, so. Not saying I'm going to. Let me stop. All right. <laughs> You'd like to whip your dick out on your mother-in-law's Fuck forehead. No. <laughs> I love my girl. I'm not. Sarah, real quick. You yeah. have a little bit of lipstick on, on your On my teeth? teeth? Yeah. Oh, hell no. <laughs> I was like a crazy secretary. <laughs> Is it off? Let me see. Yep, you're all good. All right, well, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> moving on from the lipstick accident of 2024. Is that a hard thing for women? Like, they just always... No, well, I don't know why. For me, it's a hard thing. I'm always getting lipstick on my teeth like someone's weird secretary. Yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> like an old Jew lady. <clears throat> All right, next up we got Don't Smile. Hey, Danny, I'm a 19-year-old kid from named Dylan from Lincoln Park. Shout out to Lincoln Park, Michigan. Or like we call it Down River. Yeah, Down River, man. It's not. It's a lot going on in Down River. Anyways, about eight months ago, I got jumped and ended up losing my front tooth in a beating. I found it hard to find women who will accept me for what I look like now. So my question to you, do I tell them before I meet them or let them know on their own? Because I have a false tooth, I don't like wearing it because I sound all lispy. Feel like the missing tooth definitely adds character, but is it good character? Dylan. No, get a tooth. As a person that didn't have a tooth for a long time, it, it definitely is. Um, You could lose like a lot of self-esteem. It's like a because I've it been a lot of times where I've, I've met girls or something. And then I'll be talking, I mean, before I even talk to them, they'll be like, oh, you can see they smiling or they looking at you cool. They so did you say so? And they'd be like, oh. <laughs> yeah. <dude. laughs> like, what happened? Yeah, I was, yeah, my shit was all fucked up. Damn. Yeah. But I actually wouldn't, I, I actually didn't really care about getting my teeth fixed. I actually just did it for health purposes. It was like they was, my dentist was telling me like it could lead to like heart problems and shit like that. Yeah. Like, you know, so I got my teeth fixed and I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I I I liked my missing tooth better. I thought I it, it, it gives you character. Yeah, I thought I was cool. It looks cool on you, but I don't know how cool it looks on most people. I mean, you just gotta own that shit. You know? Yeah, that's yeah, more yeah, like yeah. with anything else. Like, I feel like people need to own their flaws. That's what makes them. It's what separates them from everybody else. You know? Right. So, but yeah. So you wouldn't date a guy with a missing tooth? Depends on which tooth. What you mean? If it was in the front and center, no. My shit was front and center, and the other one was chipped. But Actually, my teeth, I don't know, it's like they had it out for me. I don't know, God was just like, this <laughs> motherfucker don't need no teeth. Because I got hit by a car when I was a kid. And you did? Yeah, I got hit by, in the fucking KFC parking lot. No. I ain't that some nigga shit. Fucking, um. No. I was fucking, um, I took my homeboy bike. And then he was like, you know, I was riding his bike around and shit. And he was like, bring me my bike. Bring me my bike. And I just ran into the fucking street. 
not even looking both ways and shit and got hit by a car. But the crazy part about that that I, I remember the most is that when I got hit by the car and I was in the air, I was like floating in the air. It seemed like time stopped or some shit. Like I do remember that. Like I was like in an alternate universe or something. Like everything stopped. Like and everything was just going slow and I fell and broke my tooth. And then, um, but I went and got my tooth fixed. My mom went and got my tooth fixed and shit. So then I had a fucking, you know, a little fake tooth or whatever. Then I was messing around with my cousin. He pushed me down. I hit my tooth on a, um, the, the, the leg of a table. And then it broke again. You need a mouth guard. Exactly. I just want to say, God had it out for me. Then I, I just had these chipped teeth. And then I was like playing basketball in high school. And fucking um, somebody came down with an elbow. Elbowed me in my mouth. Knocked that tooth out. So then I had a missing tooth and a chip tooth. And then it just was like, fuck it, man. I ain't had no fucking dental insurance. I'm in a hood and <laughs> shit. <laughs> so I just was just rocking a missing tooth. But I've seen girls, like cute girls with like gaps and shit or like missing teeth or something, you know? Some. But also like sometimes women with missing teeth, it's like a little methy looking. A little meth mouthy. Yeah. I guess you know right. what I mean. Hope people didn't think I was on no meth shit. I mean, no, you looked cool. I mean, yeah, I tried. I tried my best. You looked cool. I with tried my best. Chip teeth and a gap. Smoking cannabis doesn't have to hurt. Upgrade to freeze pipe today and experience smoother clouds without the throat burn, chest pain, or coughing attacks. Freeze pipe makes a unique line of freezable pipes, bubblers, bongs, and more. That cool smoke by over 300 degrees. Every piece is made of thick glass and creates clouds so cold you'll check if the bowl is even lit. The secret is freezable glycerin chambers that come on every piece. Pop one of these chambers in the freezer for one hour and as smoke passes through, it's instantly chilled for a relaxing experience without the afterburn or coughing. And one thing we know, when you're smoking, you don't want that cough. And also, they make great, amazing pieces, man. They look great, man. American-owned and with over 100,000 happy customers, Freeze Pipe is your solution to smoke like royalty without paying a king's ransom. Shop now at thefreezepipe.com and use code Danny B for 10% off your entire order. That's thefreezepipe.com and code Danny B for 10% off. Order today and get free shipping and say goodbye to harsh smoke forever. Whether you're a seasoned gym goer or just trying to get your fitness journey started, FitBot will push you to make progress. It's like having your own personal trainer, but better. It's cheaper. You can work out anywhere with or without equipment. And it's easy to build a custom fitness plan that works for you. We all know summer's coming up and we all got to be in shape. You want to take your shirt off and have that good summer bod. FitBot creates a personalized workout routine based on your goals, fitness level, and available equipment. FitBot also adapts as you improve. So each workout will be challenging and push you to make progress. And it has over 1,000 demonstration videos to help you learn new movements the right way. Add FitBot to your workout essentials. Join FitBot today to get your personalized workout plan. Get 25% off your subscription or try the app free at FitBot.me slash Danny B. That's FitBot, F-I-T-B-O-D dot M-E slash Danny B. Factors delicious, ready to eat meals make eating better every day easy. Wherever tomorrow takes you, be ready with pre-prepared, chef-crafted, and dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. You'll have over 35 different options a week to choose from. Keto, calorie smart, vegan, slash veggie, and more. And there's even more to enjoy with over 55 nutrition-packed add-ons that help make your weekly meal planning even more delicious. What you waiting for? Get started today and have a feel-good week of meals ready to go. Factor is the perfect solution you're looking for upscale options done easily you just have to pop their restaurant quality meals in the microwave for two minutes and they're ready to enjoy they also have a wide variety of smoothies and snacks to keep you satisfied throughout the day head to factormeals.com slash danny b50 and use code danny b50 to get 50 percent off that's code danny b50 at factormeals.com slash danny b50 to get 50 percent off get in on a ufc 298 action with DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of the UFC. New customers who deposit $5 or more can get a no-sweat bet up to $1,000 back in a bonus bet. It's amazing with DraftKings to watch the UFC because now you got more into the fight. You need your fight to win so you can make some big money. 
Download the DraftKings Sports app now and use code Danny B. New customers can get a no sweat bet up to $1,000 if your first bet loses. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code Danny B. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Gambler. Or in West Virginia, visit 1 800 Gambler.net. In New York, call 877 8 Hope NY or text Hope NY 467 369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888 789 7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 and over, age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario, one no sweat bet per new customer. Issued as one bonus bet based on amount of initial losing bet. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See dkng.com slash promos for deposit, wagering, and eligibility restrictions, terms, and responsible gaming resources. All right, next up we got weird food combos. Do you have any weird food combos that work? Me? Yeah. Hmm. What would be considered a weird yeah, food I know. combo? I've seen recently that Sonic has a um, cheeseburger with peanut butter on it. And for some reason, I kind of felt like that might work. That might work? Because peanut butter is like, you think peanut butter don't match with a lot of shit, but it kind of do, you know? Peanut butter on a burger? I mean, it might just blend right in, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, peanut butter and a burger is crazy, though. I don't think I got any, um, yeah, the peanut butter bacon. Yeah, the peanut butter bacon burger. I don't know, man. I'm down to try it. But Sonic is just suck in general. You know, I've never been to Sonic. Sonic, they got good. They got the good drinks and shit. That's yeah, really yeah. what they whole thing is. Like the cherry limeades and all that kind of shit. They 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 got the fire drinks. But as far as like the food, no, I don't, I don't really think that's their expertise. They don't really be. Uh, <laughs> They're sleeping on the they food. They don't really feel like they put no love in it. It's just be like, man, they just throw that shit and give it to you, man. So Sonic, man, it's I like li- it's like Dairy Queen food. Yeah, I live like I lived shit. close to a Sonic, so that used to be like my um. Quick shit I can grab. They got some nice little like French toast sticks in the morning. They I do? fuck with those. But yeah, peanut butter bacon burger. I mean, I'm down to try anything once. But I don't really think I got no really like crazy food combos. Like I'm not like a foodie type of motherfucker, man. I've been only like, I only like kind of eat once a day. Once a day? Yeah. In the middle of the day? No, I'm mostly at night. I try really? To eat. Yeah, probably like around like 6 p.m. Really? Something like that. One yeah. meal at 6 p.m.? Yeah intermittent fasting I don't, I don't do it on purpose though i just don't be hungry in the morning i'm not hungry really in the morning either i think it's more so when i'm on a road because i know i gotta eat just to be able to you know Perform. but if i'm at home yeah i just i don't really be eating like that i think it's all those years of adderall abuse yeah i was on adderall too i know is there still an adderall shortage yeah there is, is that still a thing there's still a shortage i've been seeing lately been fake adderall motherfuckers just giving you meth pills that's crazy yeah, no, there's like a Adderall shortage and all the people in L.A. that are on Adderall are tripping out right now. Yeah, that's been going on for like a year yeah. or something right now. I didn't realize I used to do so much Adderall. I didn't realize it was making me crazy. Oh, me either. I just I thought was like, my closet looks so organized. I just thought I was being like productive and shit. But I, it, it does. After you do it for so long, you do get these crazy mood swings you and shit. You get crazy. And you just be talking too fucking much, saying shit you don't need to be saying. Uh, yeah, and you can't shut up. But you're just talking about the same thing in circles. But then, you think you're really talking about yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then if you throw some liquor in the mix, you, you just pretty much did coke at that point. And yeah. You just fucking <laughs> yeah. wired up, just talking too much crazy shit. But yeah, I mean, I used to, my whole thing, I started with Adderall because um, just writing songs. I remember the first time I did an Adderall, I wrote like five songs that night. I was like, oh my God. I this know. is like the limitless pill. Yeah. You know, so I thought it was great. And, but then it got to the point where just after doing it for so many years, I just do one for no reason. I know. <laughs> you just sitting around. <laughs> sitting around all cracked out yeah. watching TV like, should I be folding clothes right now? I would be doing shit. I would be like, it would make me, yeah, but I, it did make me crazy though. I did know that I'd be having like just crazy mood swings and be like all extra. Because when you're like coming down from Adderall, it's like, it feels like speed or something or like coke. Yeah. Like you crash, you know? It definitely wasn't a good look. I mean, I'm glad it's a shortage. I mean, people don't need it. I mean, the crazy part to me is that what I realized about Adderall, like I was doing like, you know, I just imagine like kids, like you mean to tell me like they prescribe like elementary kids fucking Adderall and you just in class like zonked out like. 
No, that's so crazy. Think about how intense it is for an adult and then a cracked out kid. Fucking coloring, just Cut. fucking being perfect. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you ain't going outside the lines of nothing. You just got a fucking Picasso pick and shit. Yeah. All right, next up, we got Peanut Monster. Danny, I eat peanuts whole, like with the shell. And Ew. my weird, I think it adds more flavor. Would you try this? Shots out, Caitlin. I, I eat, um... I eat peanuts. I eat peanut shells. No, <laughs> no, no! You guys are crazy. What do you mean you eat peanut shells? That's the saltiest part. That's the saltiest. Now it depends on what kind of peanut. I feel like sunflower seeds are the best with that. Sunflower seeds are not peanuts, though. But actual like real peanuts. I've done it before. I mean, I would like bite the shell and like suck on it for a long time. Sunflower seeds are hard to separate. Yeah. The shell from the seed. And you know what's the crazy part? Like you can buy like um shellless you know like shellless pistachios are like shellless um sunflowers they don't taste the same without the shell i mean they, the shell brings the character like the shell is <laughs> the, the core of the yeah, flavor yeah like they don't it don't it don't taste right without the shell but yeah peanuts i really do love a good um fresh you know what i'm saying um you know when yeah. they come fresh out they kind of warm and shit extra salty and shit i do love i'm a, i'm definitely a peanut guy yeah i like peanuts but you don't eat the shell I mean, you never no, eat the shell. No, it's crazy. I mean, I'm sure I've like sucked on the shell while eating a peanut before, but I don't. I prefer it shellless. I know me as as just being a dick. Sometimes, I guess this was during my Adderall phase. I will always <laughs> um <laughs> every time I get on a plane, I will always tell them I had a peanut allergy, so couldn't nobody else get peanuts. No. Because <laughs> I don't know, just to be a dick. Like, you know what? Fuck that. Ain't nobody getting peanuts on this flight. No. You a troll, bro. <laughs> yeah, I would just do that shit. Cloth, you ever been on a flight and they pass out peanuts and shit and everybody eating peanuts? And it was just, I mean, you know, when you're on a plane, man, them smells just, con they just <laughs> stick with you. Like, you just feel like I'm in a jar of peanut butter. So I just be like, yeah. man, I don't want to smell peanuts everywhere, man. Yeah, dude. Like, like if you bring McDonald's on the plane, you're pretty much a terrorist. Like, they could just ban you. They, you can just get banned from bringing a Big Mac. You imagine let, bringing something like an egg salad. No, I've seen people. People get tuna. People get crazy on them flights. People get crazy, especially them longer flights. I used to be. I mean, people get crazy. Yeah, people get crazy. I, I just get. I just keep like a trail mix. You know, just get like a check mix or something like that situation, but. For the most part, man, yeah, everything on, yeah, I've, I've seen this video before right here. The bitch brought the crab boil on the plane. That was like, no, yeah, that's some straight up hood shit. And they thought they was doing some baller shit. Like, let me take pictures of this shit. You know, you know what fucking lobster and fucking shrimp smell like inside of a plane, man? That is so nasty. Yeah, look at it. They took pictures like we in first class. This is how we really doing it. We eating lobster <laughs> in first class. She should have got banned, though. They should put that bitch on the ban list for that shit, though, man. You got to just be, I don't know, man. That's one thing. I, when, I, when I see videos of people like um, fighting in the airport or like doing shit like that, that was like, if there's one place I do have like discipline, it is fucking um, airports. Like I, you can cuss me out. You can do anything. I'm not getting on no ban list from no flights. Yeah, I feel the same. Like, because I don't know, man. Like, it. it I mean, I've, I've seen like, I, it's nothing worse to me, even though I've done it before too, but like when motherfuckers be be coming to the airport with sandals on and shit and you just see Ew. motherfuckers feet everywhere and you know you got to go through tsa you just walking through barefoot like fuck cover it. it up i mean i've done it before but it was just a wild night and you've gone barefoot <laughs> i mean you know just wore like my sandals because that just was a wild night probably ended up going to sleep a little too late probably right an hour before i had to leave and just have to just grab my shit together and get and motherfucker be on planes bare it'd be cold on the on the floors yeah. too so it's a crazy thing. I do take my shoes off on plane, though. I you got do? To, yeah, but I mean, I got socks on. You go sock out on the plane? Yeah. I got to get comfortable, especially to sleep. You sleep on the plane? All the time, yeah. For I some can't. reason, the plane is like the easiest place for me to sleep. I'd be, I be knocked out before the, um, for that shit take off. Really? Yeah. Is it what? You scared of flights? I don't know. I just, I don't like the idea of just being sock out. Yeah, I mean, if it's gonna go down, I'd rather I'd rather just wake up and be like, "Oh shit, I'm in I'm in hell." <laughs> <laughs> It'll be experiencing it because I I have been through some um so if some close calls on on, on flights. I really? To, yeah, one time we was on a little ass plane. We were somewhere in Europe, and it was just like um we got caught in a thunderstorm, and it was like you can just see the fucking lightning going off in front of your window. I was like, "Fuck!" I just put on Sufjan Stevens. 
And I was like, <laughs> fuck it. If I'm going to go out, I'm going to go out like this, you know. Sufi Stevens. <laughs> and it's very, like, soft, calming yeah, music. The, the easiest thing to die to. I was like, all right. <laughs> no. I'm going to go out. I'm going to go out to Carrie and Lowell. Fuck it, man. <laughs> so do you listen to a lot of music? Are you, like, a music person? Yeah, I listen to a lot of music. Because some people, like, um, they only listen to music, like, in their cars and shit. Yeah, I listen to it in my car. I listen to it when I'm cleaning a lot. I got, I got a, I'm, I'm more of a shower music guy. Shower's a good time. I got a um, shower playlist or like, you know, picking out clothes and shit for the day and shit like that. So what are your top five artists or bands? Top five artists or bands. Okay, let's see. Fleetwood Mac. Okay. Um, You're a little too young. I don't even think Fleetwood Mac. I like them. Well, yeah, they're fire. Yeah, they're great. <laughs> yeah, it's fire. Um, the Rolling Stones. The Stones? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I like boomer music. Um, I'm trying to think who else. Is this like bands your parents put you on? Yeah, or this is that like I like. Yeah. yeah. Um, let me see what else. It was on my playlist right now. I'm going to look at my phone right now real quick. <laughs> You're um, drinking a latte and a Red Bull at the same yeah, I'm time? Crazy. That is crazy. That's like that is Adderall. liquid Adderall right that's there. That's how you make your own. Don't try this at home, kids. Um, <clears throat> yeah, no, I like so many different artists. I like the Yeah, Yeah, Yeahs. Yeah. I like... Maps and shit? Yeah. I like Arcade Fire. I Arcade like, Fire, Suburbs. It's classic. Um, yeah. I like Zach Bryan. I like some country. I like Lana Del Rey. I like you. Of course, too. you like Lana Del Rey. Lana Del Rey. Is Lana that Del Rey it? is is like destroying a generation of women. Yeah, we're all like sad in our nightgowns listening yeah, to Lana just like Del Rey, drinking wine and be like, "I'm a bad bitch." Yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, I don't need that man. Yeah. And then crying. I love Lana Del Rey too, though. <laughs> Lana Del Rey has a voice of an angel. Yeah, she's dope. She's she can sing about anything. I just like her whole aesthetic, like like her, her whole marketing approach, the way she go about it. Then she consistently releases music. She doesn't really take no breaks. It's almost like every year she's dropping shit. So yeah. she's a studio monster. I also like Florence from Florence and the Machine. Yeah, Florence and the Machine. I don't really know too many Florence and the Machine songs, I don't think. But she's got a good voice. So um, wedding song. Wedding song? Yeah, what would be your wedding song? I guess some Lana Del Rey shit, huh? Oh, I don't know if I could get married to Lana Del Rey. I, I, I was just figuring it out. I mean, I'm trying to figure it right? out. Right? <laughs> like, I feel like it's, like, too much. I think um, wedding song would be a Crosby, Stills, Nash Young song. I guess that's classy. Called Our House. It's a song about being in love and having a house with someone you love. Do you want to get married one day? Yeah. Do you? I, I feel like the women now, they don't really care about like yeah i want to get married probably because i i've made it this long without being married mm. so now i'm like it seems nice to like have a partner why would do you want to get married yeah i do i mean i don't think i don't think no men in my family has ever gotten married really <laughs> so just like to break the cycle be you the know? first man in your family to get married? Yeah, uh, no, I think my my brother got married. I think I think my brother got married, but I think he probably just got married so he didn't have to pay child support no more. Well, that works. <laughs> Whatever works. <laughs> so, what would be your funeral song? Funeral song? Yeah. Oh shit! I know that's a dark one, ain't it? Yeah, it's got to be something uplifting. That's the same thing I said. I think maybe a Beatles song. The Beatles out. What's up? Yellow Submarine? <laughs> <laughs> no, not Yellow Submarine. Um, that's a good question. Which one? Is? Here Comes the Sun? The Beatles got a lot of dark shit to them. Here though. Comes the Sun? I was watching the fucking... Um, yeah, that's... I'm dead, but here comes the sun. <laughs> I was watching the um, Charles Manson documentary the other night. And, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, because he, he he believed taking acid. He believed that the um, the Beatles song "Helter Skelter" was all about them um, trying to uplift black people to kill white people. So his whole plan was that's what they say. That that's a conspiracy theory too. So his whole plan was to um, you know eventually um, 
let the race war start once the once the black people figure out that helter skelter mean kill whitey and then he'll hide in a cave and then after um all the white people kill he'll come out and then he'll be cool with the niggas and they'll run shit together <laughs> what yeah i know <laughs> uh, what <laughs> i know so that's why you know the motherfuckers was going out. it's so many conspiracy theories with the charles manson shit though but charles manson he he lived a very troubled life he lived a very troubled life man. charles manson yeah, it's too many conspiracy theories. It's, it's too many theories. They was out to get him. I'm going to go with that one, though. They was out to get him, man. Charles? Yeah, shouts out to Charles Manson. Shouts out to <laughs> Charles Manson. <laughs> what up, Charlie? Is there any artist or song that an ex ruined for you? So many. Really? Yeah. The Smiths. Oh, man. I can't listen to The Smiths anymore. No. <laughs> um... <clears throat> trying to think. Yeah. The Smiths. The Smiths. You had an ex that listened to the Smiths all the time? All the time. Yeah. I, I seen that breakup coming. Yeah. He was he was on some other shit. Yeah. The Smiths I, I've seen the Smiths live before. They 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 kick ass. Yeah, the Smiths are dope, but all the time. Oh, not the Smiths. Heaven I'm thinking about the I'm killers. Now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking about the killers. The killers. Yeah, I, I, I get I get my white bands confused all the You're time. You're like the killers, the Smiths, same yeah. thing. I, I I forgot. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's like the same shit. Kind of like not ain't it? the same. <laughs> <laughs> They're so different. <laughs> I get my white bands mixed up sometimes. I'm a, I'm a my my favorite band is Joy Division. So, oh, so you like dark goth shit? Yeah, I that's say, why you're probably friends with Christina P. Yeah, she loves Joy Division. Main mommy, yeah. Joy yeah. Division is my is my favorite band, and I would say like, but then after that, it'd be like new metal. Love will tear us apart. Yeah, I love that song. I actually did a cover of that one time for fun. You did? Yeah. Well, that sounds that like song. it would be cool. Yeah. I did it to like a hip hop beat. It was dope. But yeah, I love um, Joy Division. Um, but then after that, I would say I, I go to like new metal. I like corn and fucking. Corn? Hell yeah. I mean, corn was the first band that I think I really listened to. It was easy to transition because they had like elements of hip hop in their shit. Yeah, corn. So it was like corn, Rage Against the Machine, System of a Down. So that was like the first rock album that I bought. Dude, there was this video of the guy from from Corn just shopping for furniture in Bakersfield randomly. Yeah, that's where they're from on Instagram. I've actually had a chance was, to um, meet Jonathan Davis. I actually did a um, remix for them not too long ago. It was it was dope, man. Just really, co- yeah, because I look up to Corn. They just actually dropped a dope ass Adidas collab. They sent it's me the like shit. Furniture shopping. Yeah, Jonathan Davis. That's the homie. I actually met him. We was on a um, cruise together. You were? Yeah, and saw him in the hallway. It was like, man, you changed my life, man. Were you guys just, you guys just happened to be on the same cruise? It was Holy Ship. Oh, okay. So it was yeah. like you were performing. Yeah, he was on, I think him and, he he had like a, a, a dubstep group with Tommy Lee. What? Yeah, I think that, it, it, it didn't go on for too long, but I think they, I think he was there with Tommy Lee. They were doing like a dubstep thing. That's so cool. Yeah, it was fun. Holy Ship was great, but that was during like my Molly era. I was just on the shit ton of Miley all the time. Oh, I thought you said Miley, like oh, Miley. Miley Cyrus. I was like, Miley. oh, you're Miley era? You had one too? <laughs> no, I don't. You had a Miley Cyrus era? No, not oh, really. I was about to say. <laughs> She's got a good voice. So what band or artist do you think is underrated? Underrated. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> That's a good one. That's a good question. Um... I think Florence from Florence and the Machine. Florence and the Machine is underrated. Are they kind of cracking though? They they? are, yeah. I wouldn't say they're underrated. All right, then who's underrated? Um, let me look. I like Sharon Van Etten. You know who that is? No. She's really good. Um. Oh, that's yeah, that's her. Sharon Van Etten. Is this like um? She's like kind of indie. She sings um, every time the sun comes up. Okay. I'll check it out. Check it out. She's good. She has a good voice. Chad, you know who I think is underrated? Chad came to my crib 
this weekend we got to hung out we hung out and I got to put them up on the Frost Children. Yeah, it was great. The Frost Children is man, that's What's my favorite. The Frost Children. Frost Children, man, they they fucking dope, man. They like, oh man. But I feel like I like I say, I feel like their time is coming. It's gonna come. Damn, they look cool. Yeah, they're cool. It's a brother and sister duo. You know? And they, they out here killing shit. Like they they just I don't know. They just, that's my favorite. That's my favorite group right now. I listen, Frost Children. I listen what to do they Frost sound children. like? They, they, they all over the place. They got some electric shit. They got some, um, some real like indie band shit. I mean, they, they just, they range, man. It's so crazy. They make, uh, you can't never put their thing. Uh, every time you think you, you got them figured out, they switch it up. So, but it's like hyper pop shit. Cool. And then like, um, but then they last album they put out was more like some indie rock kind of shit. Even though I don't understand what is the genre of indie rock. What is that supposed to mean? Like rock is just rock, right? Yeah. I feel like that's where they put a lot of things they don't know where to put. Yeah. They're same. like, it's new and it's rock. It's indie rock. Yeah. So shouts out to the Frost. I definitely want to work with them. So hopefully. The Frost children. Yeah. I, I, they said they're going to be in Austin in March. I think I'm going to try to link up with them before I get out on the road and shit. Hell Yeah. So yeah, shouts out to the Frost Children. Um, do you listen? What do you listen to when you get sad? Sinead O'Connor. Sinead O'Connor is a beast. Double down with the sadness. Did you ever? Did you ever see that phase when Sinead O'Connor first started being on Twitter and she was looking for dudes to give her anal sex? No. That was like a whole thing. She was bugging. She was trying to get ass fucked yeah. on Twitter. She was just saying like, man, if you ain't trying to hit the ass, I don't want. I don't want to fuck with you. She was no. going. Yeah, she was. I I I swear, Google this shit. I, I at least do it once a year. Be like, did this really happen? <laughs> Sinead O'Connor Look, looking for tweets. anal. I think this is when Twitter first came out, and she just was wilding on it. I forgot it was somebody she wanted to. I can't. I can't, don't get me to lying. But yeah, she was. She was on she's Twitter fooling, to, and she was like, yeah. She's looking for ass play on Twitter. Yeah, she didn't know. Well, that's a dark, dark day. I didn't. You know, her actually, um, her documentary is, is really good, too. If, if anything, man, I feel like um, um, Sinead O'Connor, I mean, she did have her moment and, you know, she was wilding out and shit. But I feel like a lot of people, she's like, I wouldn't say underrated, but she don't really get all the props she kind of deserved. But maybe it was a little self-sabotage. Yeah, she, she's Sinead tweeting O'Connor about on looking for, for dick. I forgot. It was somebody she wanted to fuck, man. She kept, she was kind of harassing them, too. She was. Yeah. She was. She was going crazy though. Was it Justin Bieber? No, I wasn't Justin Bieber. It was a black dude. She was. <laughs> she was trying Says, to get an ass play. Must from. not be named Brian or Nigel was one of her requests. Mm-hmm. What? I want someone to fuck me in the ass, but his name better not be Nigel or Brian. I thought she was a cool chick for this though. But <laughs> what did Nigel and Brian do to hurt her? Because I didn't see that. I, I didn't. I didn't see that side of Sinead O'Connor ever, man. You know, I, I didn't. I didn't see that coming from her. But she was. Yeah. She was. She was horny. She, she was horny says, on me. Uh, I like me a hairy man, so buffed and or waxed need not apply. Ew. Must be very snuggly, not just wham bam. Then, no, these are like the PC tweets, man. You got to see the real crazy shit. I mean, it's a rabbit hole listeners could go down on their own. I don't want to get too a creepy. hairy man. But yeah, she was wilding out. She was wilding out. All right, we'll get ready to get up out of here in a minute, man. Um, just spin the wheel one time. Wow. Oh, a wheel? Yeah, we spin the wheel. Dance Dance Revolution. You ever played Dance Dance Revolution? I mean, yes, and I was bad at it. Yeah, I'm, I suck at it too, but uh, it is a fun game. I liked all those music games. I remember when that was like a whole thing with the Guitar Hero, Rock Band, and all that shit. Even though I, one thing I really did love about um, like Rock Band and all that shit, that it was putting like younger kids and shit up on dope ass music. Yeah. You know, like from, from before and shit. But Dance Dance Revolution, I, and when you see a person that's a pro in that shit, it's almost like, yeah, you ain't got no life. It's almost yeah. kind of like it's kind of cringy in some sense, but they got the fucking they got the, the moves. What, what is it? They they're touching the bar. Yeah, they, they holding the, the bar. Fucking, then they just they rain the dancing on that motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, look at them. Wow, look at them. Mm-hmm. getting jiggy with it. I don't want to look like that. 
It is it is kind of embarrassing to see in public, though. Do it at home. I mean... Do it in the privacy of your own house. Dance Dance Revolution set up it has to be real expensive. I'm pretty sure not most kids, you know. Don't have that. Yeah, you just can't be copping that. But, I mean, look, killing it. Killing it. This motherfucker, you know he play hacky sack and shit. <laughs> yeah, Dance Dance Revolution, man. Are you a video game person? Not really. Yeah. Are you? Yeah, of course I am. You I mean, are? Even though Steve-O, he made me feel like a a, a, a a bad person to play video games a lot. Why? Because he said, you don't have no life if you sit around playing video <laughs> games all the time. And I was like, damn, man, he kind of right. So I, have been, uh, I haven't been playing video games as much as of late. But I've been making music and shit, so I've just been concentrating on that. But I, I've been, you know, I, I throw some Baldur's Gate on. Video game review. Baldur's Gate? Yeah. You like that? <laughs> <laughs> what else is there? Uh, Fortnite? I don't play no games like that. Oh, I don't know. I don't that's know like, what kind of games you play. Fortnite. Stardew that's like, Valley? No, that's like some <laughs> normie shit, man. Like, what um, do you play? Uh, I like um, role-playing games. Role-playing games? Yeah. Japanese role-playing they games. They have role-playing games on video games? Yeah. Oh, so you're genre. mixing, like, your kink with your video no, game. No, it's not that kind of role-playing. Oh, well, when I hear role-playing, that's what yeah, I think. Yeah, but it's not that kind of role-playing I think game. it's like a it's sexy so like teacher-student like role-play or something. It's just like a deep story, like Final Fantasy and, okay. yeah, Baldur's Gate, you know, Fallout. It's more just... Fallout. And, and I like turn-based. I like turn-based you know RPGs. what I like? Boss g- levels. I don't know. <laughs> Boss levels. You, you got like, XCOM, I don't know anything then? about... Huh? You fuck with XCOM? <laughs> no. If you if you like turn-based, you fuck with XCOM. There's gambling in that shit, too. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It's, it's, it's random shit. You got to play it. All right. It's smart as hell. You'll like yeah, it. like Zelda's like a role-playing game. I guess Zelda, Zelda could be considered role-playing. I never really thought about it like that. I um, think Robin Williams' daughter's name is Zelda. Yeah, that's a dope-ass Isn't name. Isn't that cool? Um... Yeah, but all right, all right, that's enough. All right, we're getting ready to get up out of here. You got some shit you want to plug? Uh, you could follow me at Princess Shank on Instagram and Twitter. You can find me every Monday on This Bitch Podcast and every Wednesday on Shank. When does this come out? Do we know? Ain't no telling. All right, yeah, at Princess Shank <laughs> on Instagram and Twitter for show dates. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming through. It's so yeah, fun kicking so it with you. Fun. We love y'all, motherfuckers, man. See y'all next week, same time, same channel. Y'all know what's up. Peace. Hell yeah. Bye.